Learning to Love Art. Medieval Conquest and Chivalry in Tapestries. When we think about pieces of art, we frequently think about paintings and sculptures. One art form that requires an equal amount of skill but that often receives less attention is tapestry. Throughout history, tapestries have frequently illustrated powerful images of heroes and military victories, as well as other subjects. Let's take a look at how the size of these tapestries, as well as the numerous details they show, communicate the ideals of bravery and honor. The first tapestry that we will look at today is called the Baia Tapestry, and it was most likely made in England in the late 11th century. This work of art is not technically a tapestry, since it was created through embroidery rather than the weaving techniques traditionally associated with tapestries, but it is frequently referred to as a tapestry anyway, likely because of its intricate details. It is so detailed in its telling of a narrative that it is almost 230 feet long. The narrative that this work of art tells is of the events leading up to the Norman conquest of England, perhaps most notably the Battle of Hastings, where Norman forces were victorious over the British. Let's take a look at this specific detail from the Battle of Hastings section. Here, we can see Odo, a brother of the Norman leader William the Conqueror, boldly rallying his troops. We can see that he is riding a large, leaping steed, and that he is boldly brandishing his weapon above his head. Many art historians believe that Odo may have been the person who commissioned this work of art. Since Odo was the person paying for this work of art and overseeing its creation, we can understand why this tapestry illustrates Odo as exemplifying medieval ideals such as bravery in battle. You can see this work of art at the Musée de la Tapisserie de Bayeux in Normandy, France. Another tapestry that was meant to communicate heroic ideals is the tapestry King Arthur, which was made around the late 14th century in the southern Netherlands. It was made as one of a series of tapestries about the nine heroes. In medieval times, the nine heroes were a series of heroes who were believed to perfectly represent the medieval ideals of chivalry and virtue. Other heroes on this list include Charlemagne, Julius Caesar, and King David from the Bible. Considering this information, King Arthur's depiction in this tapestry makes sense. Surrounded by intricate Gothic architecture, Arthur wears a golden crown on his head and wears a sumptuous garment embroidered with crowns. He bears a dignified, aloof expression, further reminding us of his kingly status. Furthermore, even though the tapestry in and of itself is very big, he is depicted as the largest among the people in it, who comprise of members of the clergy, making it easy to identify him. It is definitely evident from this tapestry that King Arthur was venerated in medieval times. This work of art is currently at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. A tapestry that similarly focuses on a heroic personage is tapestry showing Constantine's triumphal entry into Rome, which was completed in the 1620s. This tapestry was designed by the famous Flemish artist Peter Paul Rubens, but was woven in Paris, France. Like the tapestry featuring King Arthur, tapestry showing Constantine's triumphal entry into Rome is part of a series of tapestries, which in this case were meant to illustrate important events from the life of the Roman Emperor Constantine. Like all the tapestries in the series, this image features a wide variety of details that communicate Constantine's greatness and that help to tell the story of his reign. Perhaps most notably, we can see Constantine entering Rome on a large steed, graciously greeting his people. He is followed by his stalwart soldiers, and Nike, the goddess of victory, puts a laurel wreath on his head. Constantine is also offered a small golden statue as a token commemorating his victory. Collectively, these images let us know that Constantine is a powerful ruler who is respected by his people and by the Roman gods. Another notable feature of this tapestry is the intricate border that surrounds it. We can see even more symbols denoting royalty and honor in the border, such as crowns and fleur-de-lis. Presiding over all these symbols is a Cairo at the top. This Christian symbol is meant to evoke an important part of the story of Constantine, reminding us of how, when he carried this symbol into battle with him, he won. Overall, 
This tapestry serves as a powerful homage to the greatness of Emperor Constantine. This tapestry can be seen at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Through studying the Baia tapestry, the Nine Heroes tapestries, and the Constantine tapestries, it is possible to gain an understanding of the values of chivalry and bravery that were valued throughout Europe from medieval times until the 17th century. It is important to note that all of these tapestries were extremely detailed and intricate. The time and skill required to create them clearly demonstrates the importance placed on heroes like Constantine and Arthur, as well as the fervent desire of men like Odo and William the Conqueror to be seen as heroes too.